Hey guys, Buffing Game Bad today bringing you another video, and today for our weapon conversion series, we are covering the new Tempest Razorback and converted it into as close as possible to what it's based off of, which is the HS product VHS 2 out of Croatia. So we'll go ahead and do this conversion. I'll go into some technical details about the weapon in real life, and we'll cover some gameplay and see how it handles in game. So let's go ahead and back out. Here is our final design of the HS product VHS 2. Bullpup rifle out of Croatia, designed really kind of after the uh, French FAMAS to begin with, and then it really turned into its own uh, with the design, especially with the VHS-2 variant. So let's go ahead and back out here. Now to unlock this, you're going to want to go through the battle pass. So if we go ahead and look at the battle pass here for Season 4, you can see where it would be available here in the... Uh, sector d9 so you really need to kind of unlock uh, a little ways in there so not too too far you can start at d1 and go over a little bit or you can get the uh apc 45 right here as well so there is the tempest razorback or the vhs 2 let's go ahead and back out and we'll build this thing up from scratch so going to gunsmith here let's go ahead and take all these off here's the base weapon right here so there's some major differences between the real life rifle and what we have here in game which we'll go into in a little bit but first off let's go ahead and just build this thing up so at base um the barrel length you're going to want here is going to be the 18 inch tac 2l this really gives us more of a closer uh handguard to the real life vhs2 as well as just the um barrel length overall in real life you're going to have either a 16 inch barrel or an 18 inch barrel um, or a 19 inch barrel, excuse me. So this is going to go right in the middle up there. Really, with in game here, we never have the exact barrel length. So we'll go ahead and go with that. However, if you really want to play around with this, there is an integral sight option here for the VHS uh, D2 you can make. So here's this one here. This is the 17 uh, IO XL. So this gives you the integrated optic, which comes with the weapon in real life. Obviously, there's some major design differences. Um, I'll show that one on screen here, but there's some major design differences between how this looks and what it looks like in real life, which is kind of one of the, the issues I have with this weapon. And it also looks more like a uh, Mars sight for the Tavor rather than the Croatian VHS-2 integral sight. And it's a one, it's a 4 times versus a 1.5. So that's an issue I have with that. I don't like how the handguard looks there. So you can see the different options here. You have um, a 16-inch. You have a 13-inch Frenzy for close quarters with a red dot sight on this thing for, I believe, it's onions. And then if we go ahead and just select this so you guys can see the preview of it. So it is a, it is a built-in uh, optic on this thing. So it is a red dot sight that you can put on this, or you can replace it with an optic. They're not fixed with an optic there. Like I said, we're going to go with the 18-inch TAC 2L. It's going to give us damage at range, hip fire accuracy, bullet velocity, and movement speed. Cons are the ADS speed, hip recoil control, and the recoil control. So we'll go ahead and select that. Then for the laser option, I'm going to go ahead and just throw on the Oli V laser there for the in and down sight speed, aiming stability, and the sprint to fire speed. Laser is going to be visible when you are ADS, so just be cautious about where you're ADSing through doorways, things like that. Go ahead and select that. For the optic for this one, I'm just going to go, you can really pick any one here. There's no uh, right or wrong optic with this weapon. I'm going to just going to go with the EOTech with a four times uh, flip magnifier on this thing, so we'll go with that. The uh, hybrid sight, the DR582. Go ahead and select that. Now for the uh, muzzle device here, I'm going to go ahead and throw on, really with this thing in real life, it comes with, I believe, a four prong uh, compensator on here in real life. So we're going to go ahead and want the castle comp is kind of the closest one. This is going to give us a four prong uh, closest to what it kind of looks like in real life at base. They'll give us the horizontal and vertical recoil control with the cons being the aim down sight speed and the aiming stability. So we'll select that. Now, there's a couple options here. I'm going to go with an underbarrel, but just for sake of showing this off, the stock option, if you really want to get super accurate or, or more accurate, I should say, there's no exact stock option. The TA Ergo actually looks pretty pretty close to the real life version also although not exact and then also for the comb uh if you put on the h1 precision comb it kind of gives you a more of a vhs2 look also with that comb on there however i'm not going to waste the attachment for that because you still kind of have a comb on there however the h1 just looks that much better honestly so you can definitely choose to 
opt out of the optic or something like that if you want to choose that so we'll go ahead and i will take that off and we're going to go with the underbarrel option and we're going to go you actually have a custom grip associated with this weapon so if we go ahead and look here we have the dm uh proto grip so this is a prototype grip gonna help mainly with the horizontal recoil stabilization at the cost of uh movement speed and ergo but you can see that's not something that comes with the weapon really in real life so we're not going to go ahead and select that what we are going to do is uh go ahead and go just with the magpul vertical foregrip so we'll go ahead and do the x9 foregrip on this thing that's going to give us the uh hip fire accuracy aim walking steadiness recoil steadiness and the hip recoil control so we'll go ahead and select that and you can see there's one of our final designs. So I actually, in the gameplay, this is what you're going to see. I'm going to go ahead and deselect that and put the comb on just because I think it looks a little bit better. So in the gameplay, you'll see I swapped the comb for the laser. But this is our final design here for the HS product VHS-2. Other attachments here that you have, just so you guys can see. For the grips, you have different grip options. Um, we looked at the stocks, the magazines, you have a 45 of 556 by 45 NATO, and you have a 60 quad stack of 556 by 45 NATO. Ammunition is all of the typical ones that we see with the 556, and that's really it. There's no, uh, other custom muzzle devices or anything that I could see here by going through this. If we just go ahead and look at all the attachments, you can see the rear grips, the combs, the butt stocks, more rear grips, barrels. Um, there's no custom optics specific besides the integral optic or any muzzle devices on there so this is our final design hs product vhs2 really beautiful looking weapon now some design differences here in real life this actually has a larger uh carrying handle which looks more similar to the vhs or excuse me the famas which you'll see on screen so it's a carrying handle with a, a picatinny rail and you also have in real life you can see here Right here on this weapon right now, we have the charging handle is ambidextrous. However, in real life, it's more of a G36 charging handle, and it would be up further underneath where you see that uh, that uh, carrying handle go go over what it's supposed to be, the carrying handle with the pick rail there. So it would be further up, and it would be completely ambidextrous, just like a G36. That way you could charge it from either side. Here, they're going something more like an MSBS Grot, which is the um, Polish bullpup Grot variant. They're going with something more like that, especially with the upper receiver assembly on this. It looks a little funky even though it's definitely supposed to be a HS product VHS-2. So the big thing with the VHS-2 is it's completely ambi controls, ambidextrous. So we have, you see the fire selection on the left and the right-hand side above the pistol grip of the trigger guard. You have a uh, fully ambidextrous charging handle here. We have it on both sides, left and right, although it's very not accurate to what it is in real life. We're definitely missing the uh, Picatinny rail uh, carrying handle on this thing in real life, which we have uh, here in game. It's just a flat top like an MSBS Grot. And then we also have completely ambidextrous ejection ports here on the left and right hand side. So you can see here, um, right above the magazine well, this is you could, if you wanted to inject eject your rounds out of the left hand side, you can see that ejection port. You would just open that up, and then you would close the right hand side here. You can see where it's uh, right now selected to eject on the right hand side. So we could easily select which sides we want to uh, shoot from. So again, completely ambidextrous for left and right hand shooters. Magazine ejection port is here. There's a paddle release on the back of the weapon, as well as um, you see the bolt release there underneath the buttstock also. So we have the paddle mag release, and the bolt release is there as well, right on the bottom of the buttstock. So those two buttons, paddle release and bolt release. And that's the HS product VHS-2. Again, definitely some major design differences from the real-life version, but it is indeed supposed to be the VHS-2 in real life. So... Let's go ahead now, and we will uh, go into the firing range quick, and I'll just show this thing off before we get into the gameplay. So, in real life, this thing does have a fast rate of fire of around 850 to 900 rounds per minute. It seems to be around that, maybe around 800, not quite as fast as I would expect it to be in games like Insurgency that are much more accurate. So, we'll go ahead and just let this thing rip. Now, if you want a more accurate variant of this, you're going to want to go with that integral optic version. Seems to be very, very accurate with this build. Now, let's just bag dump here. So, he's charging it. You can hit, again, they're not really doing, you can do full release on this thing in real life, which is underneath, like we said. So, that's the HS product VHS2. Again, some major differences between the real life version. They really kind of 
did a combination of like a MSBS Grot B and the VHS 2. But regardless, it still is really nice. Fast rate of fire. And it looks pretty cool. So let's go ahead now. And we will jump into the gameplay. Here you'll see the gameplay I'm playing on uh, one of the new maps. Which is called uh, Kunstar District. I'm definitely mispronouncing that really, really badly. But uh, regardless, new map here. Part of the new Vondal map, I believe it is. And... Uh, the weapon itself just performs really, really well here in game. I'm a big fan of this weapon. Fast rate of fire. And uh, definitely damage is a little bit lacking, I feel like, in some areas. But you can definitely build this up better than I have it here. Now, in real life, another difference is you would have a transparent uh, magazine on this. So you could see the round count, again, similar to a G36. We don't have that here in game. We have a uh, straight polymer black magazine. So we can't see the round count, unfortunately, uh, which would have been pretty neat. But... Still a really nice weapon. Uh, I really wish they did the correct carrying handle with the pick rails in-game instead of the flat top. But regardless, it still looks pretty neat. Um, this weapon, in real life, the VHS-1 variant was introduced in 2007, put in service in 2009. And then in 2013, the VHS-2 variant was put into service. So the caliber, 556 by 45 NATO. It is produced and manufactured by HS Product out of Croatia. It is a bullpup assault rifle originally designed kind of as Croatia's answer to the FAMAS assault rifle. So the, the VHS-1 looks very similar to FAMAS and then the VHS-2 uh, really came into its own with integrated uh, Picatinny carry handle, pick rails on the, on the handguard, top, left, right, etc. Um, just a really nice looking weapon and it's been combat proven in um, numerous conflicts in Iraq and Afghanistan. So it has seen combat. It's a proven rifle, which is actually, I would say, one of the better known assault rifles combat-wise that's out there right now. Definitely one of these ones that just came out of nowhere the past couple years, especially it was just adopted and manufactured here in the United States by Springfield Armory as the Helion. So you can get the semi-auto version of the civilian market as the Helion from Springfield Armory, which is essentially a copy of the BHS-2, just in single-fire select mode. And again, this weapon, just a great weapon. It's seen action in Syrian Civil War and the war in Iraq as well for the BHS-2. So, in real life, the action is a gas-operated rotating bolt. The length of the weapon is, in millimeters, is going to be, uh, depending on the variant, is going to be 800 to uh, 850. Or if it's the K2 version, it's going to be 710 to 760 millimeters. The barrel length in real life is going to be either 500 or 410. So, you're looking at 16 to 19 inch barrel based on the variant that you're using the weight in kilograms is going to be 3.9 kilograms or 3.75 kilograms dependent on the integrated version of the optic if you do have it rate of fire rounds per minute is going to be 850 rounds per minute and the magazine capacity is going to be 30 so the big thing about this thing is that it is completely ambidextrous with the vhs2 or the vhs1 or the original vhs which was not fully ambidextrous the, so that's the big selling point here is it's fully ambidextrous with firing controls ejection ports charging handle etc um which is really nice and it's a modular assault rifle with fully integrated picatinny rails on the weapon in all the key spots as well um adjustable buttstock for different lengths of pull as well so again very very modular assault rifle here and like i said in real life it does come with the integrated optic uh for this weapon which the difference here in game is it's four times optic and it doesn't really look quite right whereas in real life the integrated version of the optic is a 1.5 times optic which again it looks different the handguard and everything here in game looks different they really made some some questionable design changes to this weapon here in game i'm not sure what the purpose was they seem to do that with a lot of the weapons but this one does look uh a lot different than it does in real life so let me know your thoughts down below again just a great weapon I, I this was on my wish list to be added to the game originally so i'm happy it's here i really enjoy this weapon in um insurgency sandstorm i've done some videos on that and play with it there if you guys are interested in that go ahead and search on the channel I'll try and leave a link down below to that video if i can find it um but otherwise just a great weapon again really good to see another bulb up here i'm a little disappointed we didn't get an lmg this season so far i'm not sure what's going on with that uh, hopefully we get at least two of them here in Season 5. But let me know your thoughts down below here on the uh, Tempest Razorback or the VHS-2. Again, it's kind of a combination of the MSBS Grot B, um, which is the Polis bullpup version of the MSBS, as well as the VHS-2. Although it, it is really supposed to be a VHS-2 or a Springfield Helion. 
um, definitely just made a lot of design changes here to avoid copyright or whatever it may be. But good looking weapon overall. Big fan of this thing. It's going to be fun to use and unlock it and level up. I can't wait to play with this thing in DMZ a little bit with you guys. Should be good. Let me know your thoughts down below. Social media links are down below as well. We have Instagram, Twitter, Discord. Best places to get a hold of me if you guys are interested. Um, let me know your thoughts of this weapon. We'll be doing some more videos for the conversion as well as the APC-45, which was also added here to the game. Um, so let me know what you guys want to see covered. I'll also be doing some um, DMZ gameplay and videos here coming up as well as live streams. So... We have Twitch down below as well. I may be doing a live stream tonight later on. Um, so you guys can check that out. Go ahead and sub and follow over there. And uh, we'll probably have a DMZ video or a live stream up later tonight for the launch of Season 4. Especially covering the new map. So let me know what you guys think down below. If you're enjoying the content, be sure to like the channel and or like the video and subscribe to the channel. It definitely helps out uh, the smaller channels like myself. Um, I will be putting out more content regularly here. I took a break for a while. I'll be putting out a few videos a week. Not going to be doing every day or anything like that, but I will be putting out hopefully um, two to three videos a week with a live stream here and there as well. Um, trying to be a little bit more consistent here going forward. So let me know your thoughts down below. Let me know stuff you want to see, content, different um, weapon conversions, all of that. Till next time, this is Buffner Gaming with the HS Product VHS 2. Till next time, Buffner Gaming out. Target down! RTV at this time.